come on inside the Carrier Dome. Largest crowd of the season expected today. Over 30,000. 7.7 acres of pandemonium for UConn and Syracuse. And hi, everybody. I'm Jim Nance. Welcome to what they're calling the Big East Game of the Year. UConn has a chance to become number one in the nation with a victory today. But the Big East standings are also important here because Syracuse can catch up with the Huskies with a victory by the Q's today. When you look at the top ten coming in, remember, North Carolina and Kansas have already lost this week, so UConn poised to slide the number one with a victory here for the first time in school history. And Syracuse in the top ten, ranked tenth in the nation. They met earlier this year at UConn, and Syracuse led most of the way in that one before the Huskies won it. And uh, Billy Packer, Lawrence Moten today, going for a little record of his own. A big record, Jim. He could become the all-time greatest scorer in Syracuse history, beating out Derek Coleman. He's only 20 points behind. Coleman still leads the all-time career uh, rebounding record in the NCAA. This guy has been in double figures, 108 of 111 games he's played. A great, a great player. It should be a great scene today, Billy. Syracuse and UConn coming your way next from the Carrier Dome. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Baked Tostitos. You got Tostitos, you got a party. UConn and Syracuse. Huskies won the first matchup 86-75 three weeks ago. Jim Calhoun's team, 18-1 and one on the year. With Allen Knight and Marshall in the front court and the back court at Shepard and Ollie. Jim Beheim, 19th here at Syracuse's Orangeman, 17-3, and three, with losses to George Washington, Connecticut, and Kentucky. Ranked 10th in the nation. And for the Orange, Wallace, Reef Snyder, Jackson, backcourt of Moten and Lloyd. The referees include Jim Burr, and that's what you feel outside, folks. It's like minus 30 degrees with a wind chill factor. So Burr manning the crew. That includes Valentine and Cahill. And the Q's will have it first. Wallace. Great Snyder. Oh, missed the chippy. One more try for the Orange. Three times it rattles out. Tremendous offensive rebounding by Syracuse, but you got to get something to happen there. Travis Knight back to Ollie. Knight gave it up to Marshall. Teams are really moving their feet, Jim, defensively in this game. Ollie jumper. Tight rims here at Syracuse. Here comes Ray Allen now. Allen with Marshall wide open for the game's first two. Probably the best running forward in college basketball. He beats teams down the court consistently, game after game. Double team on Reeve Snyder. And a traveling call. This is going to be some intense scene today. Jim, Reeve Snyder, and I couldn't agree more, but he's not the kind of guy, we saw this in the Kentucky game, you do not want the ball in the hands of guys like Reeve Snyder and Wallace trying to bring it up the court, particularly on the wings where Connecticut and clubs like Kentucky press so well. Shepard knocked loose. Knight saved it. A cutting alley open for two. Nice look by Marshall. What happened is Lloyd got caught in the double team. Now see if Syracuse can get the ball in the middle of the floor. That was the key for Kansas, destroying the Connecticut press. Reef Snyder for Syracuse's first bucket. And also to pound the ball down in the paint. Kansas was effective. That's what you've got to do to knock off Connecticut. Pretty good matchups out there. Jackson and Allen. Good size matchup. And a violation against the Huskies this time, traveling. In that first matchup, 
Syracuse controlled the first, well, nearly 30 minutes, leading by 11 before the Huskies just turned a switch, as they said. There again, Reeves Snyder getting trapped. Jackson. For all. Night jumper. Wallace, one of the nation's best. Lawrence Moten, three. Reef Snyder back up for two. Well, Syracuse dominating the offensive board so far. Marshall flips it off the glass. Donnie Marshall with four. Here's that pressure again. Looking for the trap spots. Good job by Lloyd to pull the ball back. by Jackson. He'll shoot a couple. Real nice decision making by Sheffield. He had two men down. Donnie Marshall as, us as usual. He looked Marshall's way and then fired the no look to Ollie. So Ollie will shoot a couple. And Ollie said recently we're trying to leave a legacy. This class of mine is the greatest UConn team ever. With a win today they can achieve something no one ever has in school history. As number one ranking in the nation except for the women's team, which is right now ranked number one. <laughs> and, Jim, that would set a precedent that never happened before in NCAA history, right? The men and the women both number one, if that happens. Both number one in the same week. That could happen. Lane violation. Not called. Marshall. Boy, he is something the way he runs up and down the floor. Moulton was wide open. Ollie, great assist tonight. Bounced it in there to the big center. And UConn is in front 10-6. Not many guys in the country have improved as much as Travis Knight. Good hands, Billy. How about this pass? Terrific. Look at how Kevin Ollie got down on the ground to make the bounce come up nice and soft. Terrific technique on his part. You stand straight up, the ball comes up too hard. Ray Allen steals it away from Moten. And a break for UConn. Allen. Oh, no call. Well, he wants a foul call and gets it this time. I believe against Moten. Yes, Moten whistled for that one. Smart play by Lloyd. He waited on Allen, knowing Allen is a great finisher on the break. Tried to draw the charge. Pretty good body control by Allen. You take this UConn team and the starting five from South Carolina, the state of Washington, Utah, Israel, and California, and Ray Allen is the closest one to home. <laughs> you talk about getting your players from all over the, with the globe, and Ray Allen from South Carolina has the shortest commute. Now it says an awful lot about Jim Calhoun and the recruiting and the hard work that he's done, and he believes he sells the Big East as much as he sells Connecticut to get those players to come from all over. Huskies come running out of the pack. They got players on both wings. Ollie right back to the middle. And what a rejection by Jackson. Giving it up inside. The assist to Ray Allen. Travis Knight scoring. Seeing tremendous fast break basketball here by Connecticut. They've got all five players on the break. Syracuse really in attack mode here. Syracuse has already turned it over six times. And they beat Connecticut here last year in a game where they scored over 100. They only had nine turnovers, Jim, in the whole ball game. Wow. John Wallace, who averages 18 a game, puts that one in for Syracuse. Wallace away from the ball on a push against the ever-moving Marshall. You see Donnie Marshall so tough to cover because he's so quick. He works so hard without the ball. You can see Wallace tried to stop his movement. UConn in front early. Four starters have already scored. Now, well, Billy, you see the conference breakdown for the ranked teams, and the Pac-10 has five teams in there. Will they fare better in the tournament this year, you uh, think? I think so, Jim. They have done a really well against outside competition. Arizona and UCLA, of course, up at the top right now. There's a five-second count. No, it's only got the time. Lucky break. So a timeout called by Syracuse just in time to beat the violation. We'll be right back. 
And let's clarify one thing. That last time out charge to UConn. And Billy, a lot of streaks on the line today. Something's got to give here. Well, Syracuse, 13 straight Big East wins at home. Connecticut running on a streak of 16 straight Big East wins, which is a new conference record. Marshall will head to the line to shoot two. Foul called against Otis Hill, number four, who has checked in for the Orangemen. Eric Hayward, number 45, uh, in a blue uniform. Therefore, UConn for the first time. Yeah, so UConn riding that conference streak, a record of 16 straight conference wins. A last loss a year ago this week was set back by one to Villanova. And that streak stood for a long time because it was set in 85 by Chris Mullins St. John's Club at 14, so uh, quite a move. Here the press is still on. Nice pass, cross court. And over the top. And so, that cross court pass so much more effective than going on the sideline. And Lawrence Moten gets his first points. A three-pointer. And they say that was off Hayward. Good hustle by Hill getting back on defense. See, Jim, the cross-court pass basically is like getting the ball up to the center of the court. When you go down the same sideline, it's easy to track. You mentioned a moment ago, Syracuse has won 13 straight league games here at the Carrier Dome. They've won overall 24 straight when you add in non-conference games here at the Dome. Come on, come on. Nice ball fake, good penetration. One off on the three. And Brian Fair will check in for the first time for UConn. Jerome Sheffer will sit. Fair has had some big games here at Syracuse. He's averaging 22 a game in his three previous visits. Also has made 12 out of 23 pointers. Some people have a problem shooting in the dome, but Brian Fair has had great success. Here you see 2-3 zone set up by Connecticut for the first time. time still on the break basically three guards out there in the lineup plus Marshall with his great speed Ferris trying to offset looking for the jumper Allen baseliner 17-11 UConn you see the 2-2-1 full court pressure double team and a reach in on Hayward Jim, big mistake there for teams to attack Syracuse with their big guys pulling out on the wings where they're easily double teamed. Got to keep the ball cross court or in the center of the floor. Back in that zone back in there. Moten the best outside shooter on the floor. Oh, he got three underneath. UConn lost him. How about how clever he is? One of the smartest players in college basketball that I've seen in a long, long time. Really feels the game. There to Allen for two more. And Ray Allen now with five. Michael Lloyd followed up by Otis Hill. How about that gliding move by Lloyd? That was better than a pass. Boy, and it seemed to stay on the rim for a long time, just enough time for Hill to get down there as a trailer and follow it up. You know, we talked about Connecticut having the center position played by committee last year and this year. But how about Reese Snyder and Hill? They do the same thing for Syracuse. Marshall high off the glass. Nobody back to help out. On the line, UConn ball. And Connecticut will bring in three subs, including the starters, Sheffer and Knight. And for the first time, number 32, Kirk King. Syracuse, for the first time, brings in Sims, Jr. from Syracuse, number three. And Todd Bergen also in the ball game. Young man who's starting to get more and more playing time, making his Syracuse team a lot deeper. There, tipped up by Knight. With a glancing blow, Knight tips it home. I'm not so sure Wallace didn't get a piece of that ball, Jim. But Knight will get credit. Now, Moten really the only threat from three on the floor right here, and I'm surprised Syracuse, I mean, Connecticut goes back man-to-man. -man. They really have a team on the floor you could play zone. 
Todd Bergen, number 30, a freshman from Detroit, Michigan, into Syracuse. Moten. King has position. And Allen was matched up on Moten. That was the big change in the game at Connecticut. When Allen went ahead and took him, he shut down Moten. Look at Ray Allen hand off to Knight. And Knight has eight points already. Dukan with its largest lead, a 10-point lead. And Bergen just saves it off the leg of Knight. Ray Allen showing a lot of dimension here. Well, he really is. Penetrating. He's been the recipient of those kind of passes as well as handing it off. And Jim, Knight having a big game. In the last five games, he's just been averaging 18 minutes, seven points, and six rebounds a game. Not up to what he was doing right before that. From the top, almost went in. Hill. Knight snaps it over to Shepard quickly. But Moten was there for the steal. You always spin. But short. Boy, Syracuse has come up short a couple of times on the inside. UConn three on two. Orange hustles back in time. Allen pull up. Ray Allen, seven points. UConn by 12. Jim, what makes him so effective offensively? A leading scorer in the Big East. He can take it all the way to the basket, shoot the jumper, and pull up short. Todd Bergen, who's been giving them some valuable minutes lately, hits the three for Syracuse. Bergen, the freshman, coming off a career-tying 10 against Providence. Young man has a lot of confidence. We saw that down in Kentucky last week. Not in all. Allen too high for Knight. Near the conclusion of this game, we'll be selecting a genuine Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each schools. Reef Snyder's back in for Syracuse. Bergen stays out there, getting some valuable minutes. Sims likes to put the ball on the floor. Maybe a little bit too much against this team. Jackson short. Last touch by UConn. Bobby Laser, number 33, in for the orange. Another freshman for Coach Jim Beheim. Jim Beheim doing an excellent job, Jim, with this team developing depth. When they started out the start of the season, you were looking at a club basically five, maybe six deep. Now they're getting some valuable minutes, so they're going eight or nine dip. You saw King go out and Donnie Marshall return. You better have some depth to go against this Connecticut club because they'll wear you down. Some felt that was the big difference in their first matchup. Fatigue the last 10 yep. minutes caught up to Syracuse. Very possible. Not necessarily being out of shape, just don't have enough bodies to go against a club like Connecticut that keeps coming at you. Sims all the way. Wasn't pretty, but effective. Rudy Johnson buries the two-pointer. Rudy Johnson right into the game, getting his first two. Boy, there's that same trap position. Syracuse seems to be getting themselves into constantly. It happened last week against Kentucky where they turned it over a school record 33 times in what was a horrible basketball game. Blocked by Marshall. Jackson, second time, gets it to go. Ali, a little wild with that one. Reed Schneider pulls it away. Kind of unusual from Kevin Ali. Sims lost the dribble, and Ali's right there. And fouled by Sims. Well, the Carrier Dome had a previous season high of 26,000. They're expecting 31,000 plus for this one. Jim Nance and Billy Packer playing for first place in the Big East. Jim, when you look at that crowd, you just think year after year, Syracuse leads the NCAA in attendance record. It's an on-campus facility. Great support from these fans in uh, upstate New York. Syracuse goes a 2-3 zone of their own. Johnson, big score from down in the corner. He's high this year against Northeastern, 15. Johnny Marshall, 3. That zone change of defense was effective. So Moten back into the game after a quick three there. Roy, three-pointer. 
He got a chance to do a lot of that the last two years in junior college where he took about 30 shots a game. That looks something like the three he made to send the GW game into overtime. Shepard took an extra step. And Ray Allen comes in for the Huskies. Michael Lloyd averaged 34 and 32 points a game the last two years at San Jacinto College. Three-pointer Moten short. That's a nice, easy look for Moten. He was wide open. Ollie. Oh. Unusual to see Kevin putting the ball up that quickly. Lloyd gives it up underneath to Jackson. That pass was really intended for Lawrence Moten, and Jackson intercepted his own teammate. So Syracuse down 12 at one time is trimmed at the two. Shepard short, right back to him though, for two. Sheffer an excellent rebounder, but Jim, his stats this year, shooting-wise, way down, only shooting 38% from the floor. Shepard at the reach. other end, yeah. Yep. A 12-point lead at one time for the Huskies. They lead now 31-27. UConn has made a three in 81 straight games, but 12 minutes into this one, they haven't hit one. Lawrence Moten, two out of six from the field so far. Five points for Moten. Again, needing 20 entering the day to become the all-time score. And there's the countdown, 15. 15 to go for Moten, become the all-time score at Syracuse. Very unselfish player, Jim, and I wouldn't think he'd think at all about where he is there if he can get his team in the league. Shepard stripped it away, but Hill picked up the loose ball. Another offensive rebounding opportunity inside. Knight. And only Syracuse underneath. They can tie or take the lead with this trip. Two big bodies with Wallace and Hill down in the paint. Wallace. Now called against Hill. Jim, I talked about that combination of Reef Snyder and Hill. When you think about it, these two guys averaging right at about 13 points a game, right at about 10 rebounds a game, and distributing themselves in the 39 minutes that they play together in that center position. So those are big stats for the for the position, not necessarily for each guy in the individual. Lloyd tried to save it valiantly. Back to UConn. A year ago, Hill was the starter in the pivot, and this year has been Reef Steiner most of the way, but they really divvy up the minutes pretty equally. Yeah, you can see right there, it's almost an equal split, but those are good stats. So when you take in consideration that that center position providing you 12 points and almost 10 rebounds a game, a little over 10 rebounds a game. Shot clock is at 10 seconds. foul as they tried to hit Knight with the pass. Foul called against Lloyd. And that's the seventh team foul against Syracuse. So UConn's in a one and one Jim, a point I'd like to make when we think about NCAA tournament play, we always talk about great guard play. Well, on the floor there, you really have three guys that are capable. Now with Fair in the game, they really have four guys that are capable as that clock winds down of making a big play. Not many teams have met, met much more than one. Connecticut has four, and in the NCAA tournament, that really is critical in the close ball games. Hey, you look at that UConn team, and there's a lot of guys you could say could oh, take sure. that last shot. Exactly. Here's one of them. Wallace should have been cutting to the basket that time. That was a good idea. 31-29 Huskies, 6.15 to go first half. How about that three? Oh, and is out. Rebound to Syracuse's Hill. Moten can't save it. 
into the arms of Coach Calhoun. <laughs> I won't say what Jim Beheim said reading his lips on that last one, but he asked basically, what are we doing? And the answer was throwing the ball away, which you cannot do against Connecticut. As I said, in that 100-point game he had last year, only nine turnovers a whole game. UConn has made only one of its last eight. Make it nine. And Sheffer looks like he's got tired legs on that jumper, doesn't he? Make bad pass again. And that's when they come up short with tired legs. Hill will shoot two. Now called against Knight. Well, next week, Billy, we've got Villanova, a nine-game wow. win streak for the Wildcats against UConn. We saw the Wildcats win down at Florida in a thriller. And they've been hot ever since. Indiana and Michigan on Sunday. Is it too early to talk bubble teams? Well, huh? you talk about, about Michigan, huh? Michigan, Indiana with their win today certainly has to help them. You pointed out the Pac-10 a little while ago. California, a team that really played well preseason, six and one against outside opponents on that road. Right now, with a losing record in the conference, there's like a very important bubble team that's played great throughout this year at times. They can't win at home. That's so tough in that league, too. How deep will they go? One-point ball game. And now Syracuse can take the lead. Wallace. Not this trip. Jim, I've got to count four or five times. Syracuse did not convert on what should have been easy twos. What passing. Shepard to Marshall to Allen. Moten tried to kick that one instead of getting his hands down on the floor for defense. Big swing on that. Should have been two for Syracuse. Ended up being two for Connecticut. Moten still not in the flow. Two out of seven from the field. And that's wow, way too high. Wallace carries it one out of bounds. Syracuse, just as they did last week, trying to hit home runs on every play. Not playing solid. Reef Snyder returns for that man. Meanwhile, Hayward and Ali back into the UConn lineup. And a loss earlier this year to Connecticut. Syracuse had 20 turnovers in that game. Just 12 assists. They're piling up those turnovers rapidly here in this half. 10 turnovers for Syracuse so far. Playing good D, though, and that's what's got him in a situation to be right in this game. Well, the Allen block. But right back to him. Not rattled at all. That's what I was talking about, Jim. He's got the long-range shot, the medium range, and he can take it to the hole. Right there. That's why he led JC scoring last year in the nation. And Hayward inside for the Huskies. 37-32 UConn. 330 to go first half. He's smiling soft court. called against Hayward of UConn. I mean, Wallace was oh, really great, working inside. Great offensive rebounding. Young man, 12 double-doubles last year, has eight this year. You can see why. He's working so hard on the offensive boards. Excellent hands. Had 25 points in the win here last year against UConn to go with six blocks. The 25 is still a career high that he matched, in fact, this week against Providence. He was 8 for 10 in that game. And Jim, when you look at Big E's statistics, he's up near the top in almost every offensive category. Ray Allen has 11, and the Huskies by 3. I'm Michelle Tafoya in New York. Coming up on Pennzoil at the half, we'll have highlights of North Carolina's ACC win over Georgia Tech, Bonnie Blair's world record in the 500 meters at Calgary, and Dale Earnhardt's victory in the Bush Clash at Daytona. Highlights at the half, but now let's go back to courtside. Thank you, Michelle. We'll look forward to that. Uh, Jim Calhoun missed the game up here last year. He was in the hospital with the flu and a very, very serious virus infection. 
And we're seeing a lot of coaches going down this year. And how about what's happening in the professional ranks with a guy of the caliber of Don Nelson not to be in the coaching business after tomorrow. Maybe one of the real great coaches on any level in America. Somebody, but people start taking a real close look at that. Oh, Jackson. Reed Snyder started it with a piece of the ball. Three-pointer would tie it. Boy, he got fouled on the arm, too, and still got it away. What's upper body strength? Because that was Donnie Marshall that was hit hammering. Ooh, almost a steal. Great Good try night. by Wallace, but UConn free underneath with Ali. He'll shoot a couple. You are right, Jim. Wallace did exactly the right thing. He threw it in the direction of his basket. Almost pulled off a sensational save. Now, Calhoun missed that game uh, last year here at Syracuse. Superstition for Calhoun. If they lose on the road, he won't come back and stay in the same hotel the next year. But since he wasn't coaching the game, he brought the Huskies back to the same hotel. So that one doesn't count. Well, <laughs> I guess we're all a little bit superstitious, but the key, I think, is the team that you bring. Yeah. Not what hotel you stay in. <laughs> Bergen in for Jackson. Ali will shoot another one. Ali, who had a career high, 24 against Duke back in December. It's one of two. And Shepard comes in for the shooter, Ali. Jim, you know, you talk about Ali. He's had 11 games this year with two or less turnovers in the game, and 11 games where he's had seven or more assists. I mean, he has been so solid that point guard position. Kirk King saves it. And UConn with the two-point lead and possession. 2.15 to go in the half. We're talking about Ali. He has only one turnover this afternoon so far. Will the freshman be taken to the cleaners here? Allen looking over. Hot clock at six. And stolen away by Lloyd. Michael Lloyd. Again, Jim, the scorer's roll. I think Connecticut made a mistake in judgment. Allen had the ball. He should have kept it as that clock went down. We are tied at 38. Marshall is trying to draw the foul on that play. Now Syracuse for the lead. And Shepard knocked it out. Gives the defense a chance to get reset. Ollie will return. So will Travis Knight. The Syracuse continually attacks, don't they? You know, you just say, okay, here's a possession to make sure you get the lead. They fire the ball up the court. Pennzoil at the half coming up with Michelle Tafoya. Scores and highlights coming your way. Jim Calhoun took Donnie Marshall out. He started to give him a little piece of his mind in regard to why'd you take that shot. I think Marshall explained he was going up trying to get fouled. Thought he would be. Syracuse led only one time in this game. 6-4. This can give him the lead again. And they say a tie-up situation. Oh, a great call there. Arrow belongs to the Huskies. That was a great piece of refereeing right there. Two guys in possession of the ball as it went out of bounds. This is a big time refereeing call. Watch this. Terrific. What a f more fair way to do it than that, I don't know. No way any yep. human eye could ascertain who uh, touched it last. Yep, big time. And again, short. Syracuse on the go. On the wing, Wallace stripped away. 20 seconds to go in the half. Shepard right back to Allen. And the Huskies regain the lead by two. Jim, I don't know. Is that 
that's got to be more than a half a dozen times Syracuse had the ball in a perfect position for an easy two and didn't convert why before the half and Allen comes out of the pack it's a Husky lead by two at the intermission behind Ray Allen's 13 it's Connecticut 40 Syracuse 38 and Michelle Tafoya will be along from New York with Pennzoil at the half after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the half, sponsored by Pennzoil. Now with the Pennstar molecule, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. And from upstate New York to downtown New York City, home of the CBS Broadcast Center, we welcome you to Pennzoil at the Half. Hello, everyone. I'm Michelle Tafoya. Our score after 20 minutes of Big East action at the Carrier Dome, UConn leads Syracuse 40 to 38. Three other top 10 college basketball teams saw action today, so let's quickly get you up to date. Starting with number one, North Carolina at Georgia Tech. With the win, North Carolina comes up with it. They move into first with Maryland. In the first half, Michael Maddox hit this open three-pointer. Georgia Tech led by six at the break. Dean Smith a little bit concerned, but in the second half, Rasheed Wallace comes up with the block off the glass on the shot by Michael Maddox. He would prove big in this game. Later, Wallace again finishes off the big second half for the Heels. And again, they go on to win it by four. Number five, Kentucky with Notre Dame. Kentucky, number one in the nation in average margin of victory with over 23 a game. The luck of the Irish wore off quickly as Walter McCarty takes the alley-oop and slams it down. He had 12 of the Cats' first 16. McCarty also did it outside as he hits this tray from the top of the key. He finished with 20 points, seven boards, four assists to lead Kentucky to the win. Cal and number nine, Arizona. Cal playing well on the road. They are six and one away from home. Arizona beat Cal in the earlier meeting. Dayton and Cincinnati. Cincinnati leading big, and this will give Bob, Bob Huggins his 300th career victory. Ohio U and Bowling Green. Bowling Green is now 10 and one at home. Here's their mascot, Freddie the Falcon, leading the cheers at Anderson. Ohio U's Gary Trent, the nation's 12th leading scorer, scored the Bobcats' first 10 points of the game. On this play, he follows the miss with the dunk. Then Bowling Green's Shane klein Rominski shows why he leads the nation in field goal percentage. The easy land off the feed from Antonio Daniels. He had 22 points and 10 boards to lead the Falcons to the 11-point win. Purdue and Indiana in the game you saw earlier here on CBS. Indiana comes up with the 82-73 win. Strange things seem to happen when cross-state rival Purdue comes to Assembly Hall. The Hoosiers exploded after a 14-3 lead as Allen Henderson gets two of his 17 first-half points with this steal of the dunk. This made free throw by Indiana's Brian Evans was waved off by the refs. And when the subsequent foul shot was missed, Bobby Knight was less than pleased. Indiana went on to the easy win behind Henderson's 26 points. After the game, he talked about the importance of the win. We need them all. Uh, our goal is to make it to the NCAA tournament, so we know we need every game, and this is just step one. In women's basketball, number one, UConn continued its unbeaten streak. They now own the nation's longest winning streak with 21 straight wins. And the number seven Vanderbilt Commodores trying to stop Tennessee. It's 51-33 it's in the second. Vandy trying to stop the Lady Vols' 56-game home winning streak. Well, if you want to see some real fast breaks when we come back, we'll show you what happened when they put the pedal to the metal down in Daytona today. As at the half shifts into high gear here on CBS, right after this. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, where safety, reliability, performance, and value are never optional. VIX NyQuil, part of the VIX family of products. And by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 40-38 at halftime. UConn over Syracuse. Huskies had a lead at one time of 27 to 15. Ray Allen leads the way with 13 points. And uh, Billy Packer, uh, let's talk about the, the first half and what you thought about the play there. Well, I thought both teams really played hard, played uh, aggressive defense. I thought that Syracuse's decision making to force action uh, was not in their best interest sometimes. And the fact that they didn't put away some of those offensive rebounds really hurt them. But they find themselves only two down, so you'd have to be satisfied at home in that particular position. Let's take a look at the first half numbers, and uh, you'll see that uh, UConn has shot 47% from the field. However, the Huskies have not made a three-pointer thus far. 
They're 0 for 6. Points off a turnover. You can see there's the one that uh, really came back to haunt Syracuse in that first half. Big differential there, nine points. Allen 13, Michael Lloyd tops for Syracuse with seven. Wallace and Jackson have six. And Lawrence Moten has five for the Orange. By the way, today, women's play. The Lady Huskies have won again. They beat Seton Hall by 22. And now if the men's team can win here for the first time ever, one school will have both the men's and women's number one ranked whoa, team the same week. Whoa, 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 Jim. You're already moving Connecticut up to number one if they win. That's an automatic? I think so. I have a vote, don't I? Yeah, I know, but I mean, you, you're one of many. I, okay, I well, tell me what, give me another scenario if they win here. Well, I don't know. North Carolina beat uh, Georgia Tech. But they lost but, already this week. I understand. I, I'd probably go along with you on it. The only other thing you could, could argue with would be Kentucky. Having beaten uh, Syracuse last week. Kentucky was three in one poll coming into the week, but five in the AP. I think if UConn wins, Billy, I don't think yeah. there's any doubt that we'll yeah, be number I'd, one. I'd probably go along with it. Moten, 15 points now to pass Derek Coleman as the all-time scorer here at Syracuse. up a little bit in the back for Moten to come out hot early yeah, yeah. and a three-pointer for Lawrence Moten there's Donnie Marshall again with that patented sprint of his you see that at least once a game where the Huskies get it down court and Marshall outruns everyone in the game against Kansas the one consistent player despite that the burning that they had by the outstanding Big 18 was Donnie Marshall Allen on Moten. Change it. Calhoun made in the first game. And a steal by Ali. Who anticipated well with that one. And you know who was waiting down under the other basket? Tony Marshall again. Just explodes down court. It's a wild late night tries to follow. Well, maybe it's this end of the court. That <laughs> time Connecticut couldn't convert on what should have been an easy two. Moten's three gave the Orangemen the lead for about five seconds before Marshall beat him down the other end. Now they're shooting for the lead again. Jackson three. Really hasn't had games against Connecticut he'd like to talk about Jackson. Sheffer, wide open shot. Sheffer whistled for his second. UConn Billy, by the way, in the first half committed only four fouls. Well, you know, we talked about Ray Allen being the leading scorer in the first half, but he had stats all the way across the board. 13 points, five rebounds, four assists, no turnovers. Strong half. Schneider can't get it to go. But Wallace, so tough on the glass. I'll tell you, that young man people talked about as a freshman, the next Derek Coleman, everybody kind of laughed. Sophomore, he picked it up. Now, I think you can say that as a possibility. He has put Syracuse in front, 43-42. Shepard. Just not shooting well on the year. Shepard from three this year, shooting only 32%. And his team is shooting 40 as a club. With the six-footer. Nice penetration by Lloyd. Yeah. That is Syracuse's largest lead now. Three-point advantage for the Orange. Nice little hedge move by Reese Snyder on that pick and roll at the top of the key. It's a maneuver perfected by the Detroit Pistons. Bill Lambeer for so long. A lot of colleges starting to use it. Five on the shot clock. And Ali blocked away. We'll give the block to, to Wallace. And a steal right back by Allen. And Syracuse picks his pocket. Now Moten. Pull up three. Really bad judgments here in this, on this occasion. You can get better shots than that when you've got wide open breaks. And he'll call a block against Reef Snyder. Oh, 
game really played at a hectic pace, Jim. Jim Beheim, Syracuse. They played 54 games against teams rated clubs, and they have 34 wins and just 20 losses. Huskies have now turned it over 11 times. Moten. No look pass. Wallace. That upper body strength again. Syracuse by five, make it three. Sheffer at the other end. Both teams constantly on the attack. Lloyd. They let him get right through the seam. Now who's going to have to call a timeout or wait on the TV timeout from a fatigue standpoint? Got the TV timeout coming up yep. after a whistle under 16. And who's we've got 16-10 to go. These guys got to be getting a little tired. Knight with the flip move. And he's in double figures with 10. I mean, this has been constant up and down the floor, running to 90 feet on every play. There's a change in defense. 1-3-1 one, one by Connecticut. Trying to just rest a second. Long rebound out to the Huskies. who have some numbers now. And a foul call. Call it against Lloyd. His second. And there's the TV timeout you spoke of, Billy. Syracuse has battled back from 12 down and now leads in the second half by three. Listen to this one, Billy. How hot are the Huskies in their home state? Back in January, in a super lotto drawing for millions of dollars, if you had the starting five, 11, 12, 33, 34, and 40, and threw in number 39, you won the super lotto. And suppose you didn't throw in 39. Well, you, you get go back to the grocery <laughs> store, <laughs> pick up a star magazine, and... You get five out of six, you, you get a little uh, oh, yeah. compensation. Great. I'm going to hold my breath on that. <laughs> Two, three zone by Syracuse. You can tell you're a lottery player. <laughs> There's a new meaning of lottery pick in college basketball. There's Sheffer. Oh. And still belongs to the Huskies. Good job by Hayward to keep that ball alive. It was one against three on the glass, and he was able to keep it alive for his team. Ryan Fair comes in. Otis Hill for Syracuse. This a nice substitution by Jim Beheim. Reef Snyder, who was working hard out there, now gets that break. The center position still well manned with Hill coming in. Ray Allen been quiet in this second half, Jim. They haven't been able to get him the ball. You're talking about his first half line. He also had 14 attempts. So they were really setting it up for him a lot. Exactly. 15 minutes remaining. Orange team by three. Pretty good zone attack team on the floor right now. Marshall short. Allen follows. Sheffer. Pump fake. Too strong. Neither team can convert on the offensive glass at this end of the floor. Syracuse in the first half and now Connecticut. You gotta put those away. Allen doing some kind of job on Moten. Moten with eight points. Allen has a will tie a career high with five steals. Both of those players, though, Jim, can get him in front. There's Allen. No foul called against Jackson. Somebody down out there right now holding her leg. Is that Moten? It is Moten. Yep. Former high school football star will fight through some pain here. He's, he's untied his sneaker maybe to get a little bit more time. You see, doesn't want to go out of the game, unties the sneaker to give him time to work off the pain. Now he goes and puts the sneaker That's back exactly on. what it is. I'll tell you, how smart is that? Referee's got to go for the sneaker, and in the meantime, he's fighting the pain. Gets an extra 10, I 15 like that seconds. One. Look Very at him. smart. Look at the left side of your screen. You'll see it. Wow. Oh, boy, man, that's, that looks like something that could have been really serious. Hayward comes falling on your leg. I, mean, I said he's one of the smartest college players I've ever seen, but how about that? He used the referee there. 
to get an extra minute to walk that thing off. Doesn't want to come out. Great competitor. Hayward over the back. How do you walk this one off, Billy? Well, I know there will be doctors calling and saying I'm crazy on this, but I believe in regard to an ankle injury like that, if a guy will walk it off, tighten up that sneaker, he sometimes gets to go ahead and play right away. You go ahead and, and sit or go to the bench, you don't come back. We'll try to follow it up. I give both teams, I guess, credit. There must be a lot more body activity than we're seeing because nobody converting on the offensive glass. Travis Knight checks in. And look at Lawrence Moten. He's walked that injury off. He's back out there. Talking about the, uh, the tough injury. Corey Alexander, University of Virginia, announces one day he's thinking about going pro. That night, breaks a bone in his ankle. Marshall spins to get free. Allen off the bounce pass from Fair. And he'll shoot two. Nice sportsmanship there on the part of Hill. He went for the ball. Seeing some excellent bounce passes on the break. Look at the technique. Fair sits right down. And there was Hill. Didn't get the ball, but it got a piece of the head. And see, the ball still didn't go in on the miss. Did you see that? Look at that good bounce pass. Sat right down. Good catch. Third foul called against Hill. Two shots. Ray so Ray Allen will shoot two. Ray Allen this year. Eight for 12 threes against Miami for 25. Of course, he had the big game against Syracuse the first time where he had up at that point 31 points. Matched that against St. John's with 31. Wallace got hit in the air. And now with the score, Connecticut finally gets a chance to go back and press. Moten missed the layup. Wow, it bodies everywhere, and they call it on Moten second on Moten. Well, that shows you how fast Donnie Marshall is because he had Moten who can fly behind him trying to chase him down on this play. Donnie Marshall putting the ball on the floor still kept it going. Got tripped. <laughs> 49 47 Syracuse 13 10 remaining. There's a high pick and roll move again Connecticut using. Wallace coming in on him. It's a beautiful play, wasn't it, Jim? We had the perfect angle to see how he put that so high up on the board. Tied at 49. Syracuse has missed its last six shots. And here's that 1-3-1 half-court trapping defense by Connecticut. Jeffer running the baseline. Underneath, rejected by Knight. And boy, look at Allen. Almost. <laughs> Got the break, fast break basket at the other end, but he stepped out of bounds. That was a great block by Knight, and it was an excellent pass on the inside to Wallace. Now, you see this, Jim. Look at how he realized that he was going to get it blocked, put it high up on the board, little spin on it, dropped it in there. Change the defense back to a 2-3 now. Third the 1-3-1 one, one, trap just for a second. Allen, there's that bounce pass again. Fair. Puts UConn back in front at 51 49. Jim, that doesn't happen by accident. Connecticut works on that fast break, drills time and time again. The bounce passes have been there, and guys are watching them into their hands. Real good technique. And they go back to the 2 3. Reef Snyder with a rest has good bounce for his jump shot. Remember how tired he was when they were going up and down the floor? Jimmy Behan using both of those big guys well. Matching 51s on the board. That broke a four and a half minute scoring drought by the Orangemen. Allen one-hander. 
There's that strength by Wallace. Allen says, didn't we have a tie up there? No call. Lloyd and losing control of it, but right back is Bergen. Wow. I talked about a freshman that's not in awe at the start of this show. That young man's going to be a good one here at Syracuse. Shepard to the corner, fair for the lead, air ball. Wallace is really tired, Jim. He can't get up and down the floor. Dave Snyder again underneath is Bergen. Foul against UConn. First whistle on Allen. Jim Bergen, obviously, from Detroit, played on those outstanding Pershing High School teams, two-time state champs, then went off to New Hampton Prep. So really, we're not talking about an 18-year-old freshman here. We're talking about a guy that had an extra year of prep. And a young man who thinks he belongs in big-time basketball and shown it. Kirk King for UConn, breather for Donnie Marshall. Six foot seven, good strength. Bergen scores the last four for Syracuse to put him up four. UConn still has not made a three in this game. They're 0 for 7 from behind the arc. Well, the standings entering the day in the Big East. UConn unbeaten. Syracuse could pull even with them with a victory here. And then Villanova at 10 and 2. We have Villanova at UConn on campus next Saturday, 3.45 Eastern time. Well, last time we had Villanova, a big, big win down against Florida. Uh, outstanding play, Kerry Kittles, uh, one of the nation's best. Jim, how about tipping our hand, hat a little bit to Leonard Hamilton in Miami? They've made a nice, they, they uh, really nice comeback. A lot of people wrote them off before the conference started. Tremendous adversity with injuries down there. Leonard, one of the real great program builders, deserves the success. Ryan Fair hits the three, the first of the game for the Huskies. The draw within one. So make that 82 games in a row. It was in jeopardy for a while with at least one three. Moving in on the 10-minute mark. Moten getting a little rest here. This is... right back to Lloyd. Boy, somehow got it out of there. How about Lloyd getting it out of the pack to Jackson? It was almost like a hike. So now with Moten getting a little rest, I thought maybe Allen would sit down for a little while to be ready for this stretch drive. Little go one four with Ali at top. Allen, another three at the side of the backboard. See, I think he could use a little rest, Jim. Not just because he missed that shot. We want him fresh for the last five, six minutes. Trying to go high low with Reese Leonard. Look at Bear, make the steal, and lay it up for two. We talked in the first half. He's had some big games in his career at the Carrier Dome. 25 here last year. Explosive score. And there they go back to the 1-3-1 again. Bear awful small running the baseline. They should be able to get a lob to Wallace cross court if they look for it. They can get the lob. Way out there, Jackson. Keeps it for Syracuse. Jim, now watch, watch now. They got fair down on the baseline. If, if Lloyd will keep it there and drive it down to his left, he can lob it to Wallace because fair is too small to handle him on the back line. They're not looking for it. Last touch by Bergen. Lawrence Moten comes in after a break, and so does Donnie Marshall. Moten with eight points in the game. That particular defense. It's a defense where you love to have a guy running the back line the size of Sheffer, 6'4", 6'5". You put a guy down there 6'1", and you can get the cross-court lob for a dunk. A lot of clear outs right now in Connecticut. Travis Knight with the assist from Ray Allen. Allen doing a good job today with his ball handling. Not only his scoring. And here we see that defense again, the 1-3-1 traffic. 
Timeout called by Syracuse. That basket by Knight put UConn back in front, and we'll continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Mazda. It just feels right. UPS, moving at the speed of business. And by Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth. The Carrier Dome will move over to this side of the midfield mark, where 31,000-plus are witnessing quite a Big East battle today. UConn leads Syracuse 58-57. Jim Nance and Billy Packer on the call. You see what what Jim Calhoun did there. He was playing the 1-3-1. Now he goes back to the 2-3. Nolan Bayheim wanted to set up something specifically for the other defense. Ray Allen skying for that rebound. His eighth rebound of the game. Well, he's a well-conditioned athlete, Jim, but I really am surprised that Jim Calhoun isn't sickening a little bit. He played 18 tough minutes in the first half. Has not been out in the second half. Trying to use him to attack the 2-3 zone by running in behind the defense in the middle. There he is. He'll take the short jumper. One more time. That one with the left hand. And Reef Snyder pulls it away. Pass. Moten right back to Jackson and one. Well, I'll tell you what. That's Lawrence a... Moten isn't having his typical high-scoring game, but that's the kind of play he makes when they need it. Well, but cross pass. court. Excellent. That pass actually, I think, was thrown for Wallace, and Moten intercepted it and then made the great touch pass backwards. See, I think it was a lob for Wallace, and look at Moten intercepted it. And then Jackson, a good put away. And Jim, against Connecticut, we talked about at the top of the show, you want to throw the ball cross court against their pressure. 59-58 Syracuse. They stay in the 2-3 zone and trying to get Allen free. He's just running in and attacking the zone from behind. Three-quarter, Marshall wow. Yale, shoot three. Push to the ground, they'll call it against Jackson. So Donnie Marshall, the senior from Federal Way, Washington, will shoot three. Next. After basketball, former Olympic medal winners and World Cup champions like Phil Mayer, Bill Johnson, Cindy Nelson, all on the slopes at Squaw Valley, the Chief Eagle Tournament of Champions. Well, Jim, how about what happened in Lillehammer with Andreas Goldberger from Austria winning that World Cup jumping again? I know that... Uh, I was up there. Yeah, I know you were there. He's an impressive guy, isn't he? I, I'm surprised that you know of him. Well... You never cease to amaze me. Ever since Lillehammer, I stay up with that team. Good job. Well, we'll have to bring you with uh, with us over to Nagano then in 98. 61-59 as Marshall makes all three of the freebies. Six thirty remaining in the game. Oh, got caught behind the screen. Open now three of eleven from the field. Trying to make the spin move right back to Jackson. Ties it, 61. All right, that was another great play by Moten. Some really gifted players out here, playing hard. How long will Syracuse give him the same look in the 2-3 zone? Well, this is a pretty good team to play against the zone, this Connecticut club. Good ball handlers, good perimeter shooting. Knight. 14 for Travis Knight. He'd been in a little bit of a drought. Having a big game today. 13 lead changes. Most of them coming in this half. Knight's career high is 17. Knocked away and out of bounds by Allen. Not enough time to think against a Connecticut team on a pass like that. It's got to be instinctive. This guy's like Ray Allen, just too quick. While you're thinking, he's moving. Oh, 
5.30 remaining. And now Connecticut changes defense again. Now man-to-man. -man. And Knight held his ground for the rebound. His sixth. Almost an extra step there on Allen. No call. Stepper. They wanted another call here. No whistle. Three, yes. And that puts the Huskies up by five. Jim, you know when Allen almost threw that ball away and he walked before, I think the coaches have got to learn to sit down on the bench because he saw a movement over there in a dark suit. It happened to be Calhoun, not a teammate. And when you see that action over there, you instinctively look to make the pass. Moten through traffic. Wow. Plus one. Ten for Moten. Boy, a lot of winning ball players out here wanting to make big plays. Look at him penetrate through. Tough step. Uses his body, seals off Allen and scores. That is his 53rd game. I mean, excuse me, it's 109th game out of 112 that he's had a double figure. Only three non doubles in his career. That's amazing, isn't it? Otis Hill comes in for Reef Snyder. What's more amazing to me is they listed the finalists this week for the RCA Player of the Year. He wasn't in there. And he did not make yep. one of the 13 finalists. How? Uh, he belongs in there. Again, Syracuse staying with the 2 3. Connecticut changing defenses. Sometimes you stick with the same defense too long, people find the seams. Allen and a whistle. Got hit on the shot. Co Big East Player of the Week with Kerry Kittles, who we'll be seeing next week. By the way, that's the fourth against uh, Otis Hill. Two shots for Allen. Allen has tied his career high in steals and rebounds in this game. Five steals and 11 boards. And Jim, when you think of this club losing Danielle Marshall last year, you can see the guy averaged 25 points, 8.9 rebounds a game. When you start looking at what happened, everybody picked up the number of minutes he played. And those pickup minutes are averaging 28 points and 10 rebounds a game. So the guys have really filled in for a great one. Excellent. This is the baseliner. Last touch by Syracuse. We're under four minutes. 3.58 remaining. Officials timeout. 68-64. UConn Huskies seeking number one. Each team with a couple of timeouts remaining. Syracuse with seven fouls, puts UConn in the one and one now. Five fouls only against the Huskies. 68-64, and uh, Billy, what's gonna happen here the rest of the way? Nice ebb and flow. I'm anxious to see if Syracuse now down four, looking like they want to put on some pressure. See how well Connecticut adjusts to somebody playing them in a press. Twice denied on the inbounds. Wallace, active hands. They beat it. Sure did. Have the advantage at this end. Ollie pull up. Ooh, in and out. Marshall trying to keep it alive. Couldn't knock it back to the outside. Syracuse down four with possession. Moten. Look at Jackson Sky. Ray Allen now with a career high in rebounds. Marshall at the other end. Sheffer will bring it back out. Donnie Marshall can't believe no foul called. Knight wide open. Sheffer holds it up. Wanted to use some clock. There's that experience back court again. Block is their teammate right now. Eight on the shot clock. And they've got any one of three guys to go to. Big make. Wallace stolen away. Moten for the easy two. And they cut the lead in half. Huge turnover there for Connecticut. Allen. Couldn't get any better shot than that, Jim. Expect him to make that yep. one. 2.50 remaining. There's that 
pick and roll move. Moten ties it. How about that? Had no way to get that shot off. Allen quickly at the other end. Knight to the line for two. Fallon Jackson. Ray Allen with almost an identical sequence to the last trip. Exactly right, Jim. That last bank shot by Lawrence Moten. I don't know how he found the hole for this. Watch this. Pump fakes, and it was like a line driver. Terrific shot. Here he comes, right in your face. Bounces off, gets the pump fake right off the board. Two for night. UConn back in front by one. That foul on Jackson was his fourth, so Hill and Jackson for the orange with four each. Syracuse was down by 12 at one point in this game. Both of these teams know what comebacks are like. One of two is all. And Lloyd gets it for the orange, looking for the lead with 2.15 remaining. Good decision by Lloyd. Got to get good shots the rest of the way. At the two-minute mark, Moten again. Boy, at this point of the game, you just expect his are going to drop. He's been so clutch through his career. 150 and a one-point lead for the Huskies. Steps up. Soft roll off the front of the rim. Again, Jim, that ability by Connecticut with the three guards out there to have somebody can take it one and one. Timeout called by the Orange. You trail by three. Well, the Orangeman with one timeout remaining. 131 on the clock. Syracuse possession. 71-68, UConn. Jim, a lot of things going against Syracuse right now. They're down three. Also, they're not in the one and one yet. So Connecticut can foul. Almost a steal by Sheffer. Dangerous pass. And a hand check foul called against Sheffer. But that's all right. They're not on the one and one. Who makes an appeal? Third on Sheffer. So the next one will be a one and one. Shepard got caught behind, obviously, hand check in there. Good job by Lloyd keeping him on his back. Had to use a timeout on that one. Wow. Getting the ball. And they're out. Yep, we talked about that. No more timeouts for Syracuse. Down three. And after this one, the Huskies will travel to Georgetown for a game Tuesday night before back home against Villanova on Saturday. Syracuse, meanwhile, at Villanova Tuesday, then at Seton Hall. Perhaps the surprise team in the Big East. I don't think there's any doubt about that, in fact. Excellent job by George Blaney. Mm -hmm. Miami, we talked about that. And moving up into the middle of the pack. You know, that, that timeout was a tough one for Syracuse. They have none left. And the reason for the timeout is once again getting caught in a position where Connecticut loves to trap. Three to tie with 110 to go. We know Lloyd has hit two threes in important situations this year. 12 on the shot clock, one minute on the game clock. Two point try. Rebound to Knight. Stolen away by Jackson. Reach Snyder. He lost it. They call the foul against Travis Knight. Reese Snyder lost that ball on the way up. I don't know how it slipped out of his hands. This is some steal by Jackson. And then a very smart feed. Look at the ball just got out of Reese Snyder's hands. One and one for Joseph Bernard Reese Snyder. JB. 65% shooter. Get up, get up, get up. Connecticut arrow. They call the foul, though, on Wallace. The nice piece of officiating here. Wanting to make sure Jim Beheim doesn't get the tee. The referee goes over, holds him. 
It's been a well-officiated game, big time. It's a one-and-one one for Donnie Marshall. I mentioned earlier, from the Seattle area, so desperately wanting to go home for the Final Four. Says his mother's already making plans for a backyard barbecue for the Huskies, if they can make it there April the 1st. Now yeah, they've been so close, Jim. Been denied, they'll never forget that Duke game. Christian Leitner shot. Boy, those two look rather easy. Yep. Never a doubt and a five-point lead. 45 seconds remaining. They gotta go quickly here. They're taking too much time. You can take a two or a three. Blocked by Knight. Got a foul. Got a foul. Too late. Got a foul. 30 seconds remaining. There it is. And that's the 10th team foul against Syracuse. Two free throws the rest of the way for the Huskies. Uh, Jim, your scenario, and it looks like Connecticut is going to pull this off, moves them to number one. But what has happened this year every time a team's number one, like on Monday or Tuesday night following that? <laughs> it seems to. And, and where is Connecticut end going? Quickly. Where is Connecticut going? At Georgetown. At Georgetown. Where did North Carolina go, being number one? Well, to Maryland. Lost it on a Tuesday night. Seven-point advantage. Syracuse without timeouts. Boyd. No timeout. Layup doesn't drop. Knight with another board. Yeah. Like ball game. Sheffer feels it. It's the 17th straight for Connecticut in the Big East. An incredible move on their part. 17 straight in the conference. And how about this man? He took over a program nine years ago that in its four previous seasons before he was hired, never finished higher than seventh in the Big East. Then his first three years, they were never better than seventh in the Big East. Then that fourth year, they burst out of the pack, or the back of the pack, and won the NIT. And now today, UConn is going to take over number one in the nation for the first time in school history. He's all, you know, he's a marathon man, but he's almost running that marathon on the sidelines. He's going back and forth. You know how fired up he is. You know, it was interesting at the Kansas game where he said he was really confident going into that game. And he said, I never felt that we could get beat that way by anybody in the country. Roy Williams Club really putting a hurting on him that day. Donnie Marshall said after that 29-point loss that this woke us up and let us know that we're human. They had a certain invincibility going into that game, and then I think it really made them refocus well, the, in a hurry. The genius Al McGuire says you don't ever want to go into the NCAA tournament anymore undefeated. With double pressure, so... That might have been something that uh, they don't they obviously don't have to worry about anymore but probably took a little pressure off in that regard kind of see that one coming too in the, in the games leading up to it they, they hadn't played their best before that Kansas game and now they're starting to play like they were early in the season 77 68 Moten will come up short of the scoring record in this game. Allen to Marshall. Now well, there's a case that you know, Donnie wanted to put that up, which was fine because uh, they've got this one sawed away. Otherwise, you'd want to pull that back out, let the time run out. They bring in King and Hayward and Rudy Johnson and Marcus Thomas. And Jim, they're celebrating over there. This is a terrific win, but you know, one of the things Jim Calhoun has not done is taken this team to the Final Four. And remember last year, the incredible season they had in the Big East when they got beat in the NCAA tournament. Everybody talked about it being a bad year. And they bring in Greg Yeomans, the New England Collegiate Golfer of the Year a season ago. Bolton says no, not this time. Well, I guess his highlight in basketball so far is injuring Allen. <laughs> so he'd like to hit one here today, maybe to get that off his chest. Well, they haven't been to the Final Four, but is this their finest hour, taking over number one for the first time ever? Well, you'd have to say that, although they have won some Big East championships. And they've now won 17 straight, extending their league record. 
the genuine Chevrolet players of the game are Ray Allen from UConn, 18 points and a career-high 12 rebounds, and Michael Lloyd of Syracuse, nine points to go along with six assists. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated to each college's general scholarship fund. Well, Billy, next week, we'll see these same Huskies again when they host the Villanova Wildcats. And a big game coming up down at Georgetown. They sweep Syracuse in the regular season. They've won 17 straight in the conference. So for Billy Packer and Michelle Tafoya, this is Jim Nance saying so long from the Carrier Dome, where the final score is Connecticut 77, Syracuse 70. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA Basketball Championship.